Okay, you got a short video here. This is all about knots. Now hopefully you guys can see this. Put a little piece of white paper under there so there's a little contrast. Uh, hopefully you can see what's happening. So, this is a tie-off knot for the mains. I'm doing a double half hitch knot. So, this is called the anchor string. We've already stuck the stuck the uh, loose string through the knot hole, pulled it through. Okay, so this is the anchor string. For a double half hitch knot, we're gonna take the end of this, we're gonna go over that anchor string, and then back through the anchor string, and going through this loop here, okay? After we do that, you're gonna see that there's some slack right here. We wanna pull that slack out. The way I do that, I take my pliers, I wrap it around the pliers once so there's no slippage, and I pull. And you can see there the slack is gone, okay? If I release the tension, slack is back, pull it, and it's gone. So while still maintaining that little bit of tension on this knot, I'm gonna basically rock it back and tighten it, okay? So now there's not as tight and the tension is not, or the, there is tension on that string, okay? So it is called a double half hitch. That was one hitch, okay? Now we gotta do the second. Now the second one you don't have to um, pull out like this. If you've already done that, you've already got the slack out. This one you're just creating extra bulk in the knot so it stays in place. Okay, double half hitch. You can use this to tie off all of your mains. You can also use it for the last cross. All right, I got one more main string to tie off. So again, putting that string through the correct hole. You can find which hole is the correct hole simply by looking for which one is the biggest. Now, especially if, if this racket has already been strung plenty of times, this grommet's gonna be warped because the the uh, pressure of the knot pushing against it. So in that case, you don't even have to look for the big one. You just have to look for the one that's all gnarled up and warped. Okay, so put it through, going. Here's the anchor string, going over it, and then back through it, and you're going through this loop we've created. Right there, through the loop. Very, very simple there. And again, we got some slack here. Let me take my pliers. Hopefully you guys can see. Looks like there's a ton of shadows. Okay, taking my pliers, wrapping it around the plier, and you're gonna pull, and you can see the slack right here is gone. Now it's back, all right? So as I pull tension, I release the slack. Another thing you can do, you can actually hold this slack in place once you've got rid of it. So I got my thumb right here, I'm just holding it in place. And now I can cinch it off, okay? Once that's done, the slack is gonna stay in place. And uh, all you got left to do, is one more half hitch knot. Okay? And again, tighten that up. Now you don't have to pull very tight here, right? These knots are designed to hold. I'm not putting much pressure at all. Maybe, I don't know, five, 10 pounds of force. And there you have it. You're left with um, no slack left right here. All right, there was that big loop, now it's gone. Okay, if you had slack, a lot of slack when you uh, took the clamp off, it's gonna result in this, this string right here. Oh, shadows. It's gonna result in your last main string um, being a lot looser than it should be. That slack is gonna shoot right back into this string. And that doesn't really make much of a difference to be honest, but you still wanna keep your dynamic tension nice and high and that's one way you're gonna help with that. Okay, so this next knot is called the starting knot. <clears throat> starting knot is what you're gonna use to begin the, begin the crosses. Um, the reason you can't use a double half hitch, we need a bulkier knot, something a lot thicker, because it has to withstand actually tension being applied to it rather than just holding the tension. So if it's too small, it can actually get sucked right through the grommet. So, starting knot, same thing find the actual hole, put the string through it. Now, hopefully you can see this. You're gonna wrap the string around once. Okay, you're gonna wrap the string around twice. Now, you've created these two loops around the string. You're gonna go back 
around this way. Let me get some more slack here. Back around this way. Pick up the first loop and put the string through. Now you're going to pick up the second loop and put the string through that. And you're going to pull it taut. And that's your starting knot. We're going to do that again. You can see it. There you go. Put it through. Okay, I got plenty of slack this time. Okay, over the string and through it. Just creating a loop, just wrapping it around the string. And you're going to do that again. Okay. And then you're going back and grabbing the first loop, sticking the string through it. Grab the second loop, stick the string through that. Then you're going to pull it tight. Okay. Now, to, to tighten this a little bit, you want to pull evenly with both ends of the string, pulling here and pulling there. Pulling evenly until it starts to form, and then you can smush it down by pulling this string, smush it down into the grommet. Now, it doesn't look tight. What happens is when you actually tension the cross, this is going to tighten up. And I will uh, show you that right now. Okay, I want to get you a better view of that starting knot. So I actually got a string that's a different color. So you got a little more contrast there. Okay, so again, I'm putting that string through. <clears throat> and what I got here, over the anchor string. So you got a loop. Going over the anchor string again. And I got two loops. I got one, two. Okay, I'm going to grab the first loop, grabbing the first loop right here, and put the string through it. Here's the second loop, put the string through that. And there you go. Okay, and then you just want to tighten this evenly and pull it up against the grommet. Okay, alright, so as I was saying, uh, for the starting knot, tensioning the cross string is what's going to tighten up the knot. So, I'm going to demonstrate that right here. Important thing to note is that you want to hold on to this little tail here. Hold on to it. I like to pull it this way. Just a little bit. Um, it's going to help that knot maintain its shape. If you don't do that, it can kind of get smushed, kind of compress against itself. And uh, again, it's more of an aesthetic type of thing, but it does help. You're also going to notice it helps the tail of the string go that way instead of sticking out here. Uh, again, more of an aesthetic thing, but if you're stringing for customers, you want the racket to look nice. Okay, we're on to the last knot for this Babolat racket. Uh, this will be another half hitch knot, another double half hitch. <clears throat> so, same thing applies, going over the string, over that anchor string, and then back through this loop and pulling it tight. Put my pliers, wrap the string around the pliers, pull forward to take the slack out and then cinch it off and do it one more time. Guys and gals, if you like this video, feel free to give me a like, subscribe if you need to know more about stringing, coaching, seeing my dog in the background, etc. You can follow me on Facebook at Stringing by Spies. You can follow me on Instagram at Stringing by Spies. Or you can do none of that. Up to you. Peace out.